Welcome to nothing else than a game called Counter-Strike Global Offensive, if you ever heard of that. It's a first-person shooter where you have to kill the terrorists or the counter-terrorists. Surprise, surprise, isn't it? And therefore, we're directly hopping on to train. As it's nothing else than the Oceania qualifier and a lovely paradox needs to find against order. This is lower bracket round one. Both of the teams could be eliminated by now through the qualifier. As double elimination only allows two specific mistakes. In the meantime, Kingfisher and Co. are starting a little bit of an IV aggression. It's gonna force away Zep. As the Molly's coming in, this could at least delay it a bit. Not too much. Noobster's gonna come through. And as Ins is looking for a frag, it seems like Zeph. Having his control in the back of train is working fine. It's all though coming down to only that B side. Alistair is going to move around. Going to find the head. And that's nothing else than a bomb on a pedestal. A gift by the Paradox site. A so single lonely Glock. Which is now swapped by a beautiful USPS. But one shot. Ah, but a kill. Most definitely coming in. Order taking the lead. And is that figured out correctly? It is actually, unfortunately, Paradox playing with two stand-ins. As two of those players are not 16. So in some countries, that's no problem. In Germany, it is a specific problem because those two players are not allowed to even play the game in Germany legally. And then, of course, they can't play it on a big stage and be like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. No, no, they're actually not allowed to play it, but here they are. You know, that's that's... It's not how laws work in 90% of the cases. In 99% of the cases. But that's just my guess. A beautiful headshot coming onto Alistair. This round should be just by the book. This order has picked this map. Should be all fine. In consider to turn around and you will have no real problem finding noobs. So this is a good bit of control as from now on. They can rule out position by position. In the end, though, it's only two players. So no real situation where I see this working. Both are building their personal tower and it's going to collapse in the end. And Train, just talking about that, Paradox has no record on this map. Of course, starting on the T side is also a bit of a problematic situation in that sense that it's further complicated and statistically proven that the CT side on this map is better. Obviously, Order, who have picked this map and played it four times in the last three months, are better on the CT side. Picked up wins against Atletico, Content, and Chiefs, whilst losing to Greyhound just a few days ago. Of course, shutdown is initiated, good damage is dealt. And that is actually surprisingly good damage, considering the CT site has to build up an economy with a little more obstacles in the way. That indeed is now order, taking an easy 3-0. That is going to be the first approach of Paradox taking out the weapons. Noobs are starting fine. This isn't Mitchman. I know. I'm the best impression. I'm the best impression of an Irishman. I can't fix it. I'm not Irish. I'm sorry. I, I don't even know how an Irish exit would work. But in the meantime... It's not about the Irishman. It's about the Australians. And it's going to be Noobs are taking out one after another. The name goes good towards Electric, and he even finds one. It seems like Buller is looking for more and more. Tries to get a better understanding of the situation. Either way, it works. And that is one last man who is just down to 22 HP. 
to resolve the situation on his own. The nice part is he has a molly, which could in the end delay the defuse. But on the other side is also Buller, who has nothing else than the smoke. So in the meantime, clearing out the side, realizing nobody's even nearby. Take your time with the smoke, just adjusting it right. And this is now only one AK to turn it around. It's not gonna work. They got the control over it. And Paradox. A plant that has successfully brought a few additional dollars in the bank account was nice and great, but it did not succeed to get around on the board. And of course, to point that out, you are allowed to correct me 24-7 with any of those Australian team names. A part of the uh, player names. So I think I'm, I'm okay with them. So let's see. This paradox got the bomb down, of course, is allowing them to get a proper buy into it again. Mainly focusing towards either pop dog or the situation in front of me while sending chubster for the lurk who actually is not gaining too much attention from any of the cts also with a beautiful awp angle to now take down the first deals massive damage and puts him down to one single point of health that is not a lot This patient seems to be the main objective here for Paradox. Their take on the B site. Could that work? Sees the head of Imagine. And that's another player down. Noobs are with two. And this is allowing them full control over on B as the op strikes with perfection. It's not controlling on B much more with such shots. You can say bye bye to round number five. Order's last player, Zef, is most likely going to retreat. And so it is, finally. Sign of life from Paradox. And that sign of life... It had to come in once in a while. It was actually just the previous round where it looked already quite close. But ever since, it's still the thing for me. And that has to be pointed out. The matter of fact that Paradox is playing with a stand-in. Got into close qualifier and now trying to survive here in the lower brackets. I, I'm very impressed, nevertheless, what the performance is going to be. Because for me personally, it is still that they're, they're continuing with their will to fight in this. And it is, it, it might sound, sound so basic, but for me personally, it, it's still great to see. It's still great to watch. It's not so great to watch for the Paradox side. It's really the first man down. A great awareness of Alistair. Paradox taking their time again. Extremely patient approach. They also took during the time where they were more likely to fight the first, which they then did. But that is just nasty. Ince has his personal x-ray on. Takes down Noobster. More to come. Kingfisher dodges all the bullets who are whiffing around his head. So Pillar, pardon, imagine this crew right now just looking a bit on the back foot. As King First's Ops could strike quite massively, but they're coming closer and closer. The bomb has not made its way yet, so Seth plays a pivotal role in this. The man is blind, and he's still dodging his own death. A bit of an aggression could come in. 
as the op needs to bring that, that bomb ASAP to his right hand side. He knows there's a chubster. Oh, and if he pre-fires for the smoke. No, Seth. Stay calm. It would be, of course, perfect if he now st starts shooting. But is his patience going to prevail? This is just the dance around the smoke and the belay. It has to end. Only Kingfisher alive. A single op that's going to fall. How many CSGO teams at pro level can a clan have? I'm not sure if I understand that question. What is supposed to mean by that? Meant by that, pardon. Uh, in one tournament, I think, it, for example, I think ESL does not allowed, would allow it, a, a, uh, an academy tournament, an academy team in a tournament where also a, a main team is in. Because then, you know, that could potentially have some problems. I think there was a case at PGL Krakow where Fnatic Academy was called Ballistics due to that. Either way, getting away from that. Or with beautiful 5-1 lead. Don't have any major problems. On the right track. Cruise control on. And when you're on a T side of train, you you have to be you have you need to have an exceptional game plan to outplay your opponent. Or your or your opponent never plays train, that's the alternative to it. Either way. In's coming out. Players trying to just get around the wagons and so easily on the side. With a molly just popping so uncomfortably. That's one down. Tensei gotta say good night. Same goes for Chopster and Kingfisher is gonna join the fishes. Order is just initiating a shut down. So shun ah, shut down. Pardon me. It's early. You know, I don't know what time it is in Australia. It's 1026 here. Seth is establishing control over on A. Again, the problem after this one will be Paradox hardly having any money left. Sure, there's the biggest losing bonus ever coming their way. It's still not really helping you. <laughs> In the matter of fact, it's still not helping you that you can't gain any real control over the situation. As Alistair saw up, he just saw a pixel. One jiggle peeking up on top. Finding one after another. It's just brilliant. Still Kingfisher strikes back. Tensei and his teammates. I got my doubts it's gonna work. All over the map. Order. Set screams for order. They're gonna get that order. Paradox. It will be their opponent running to already the first half taken. 7-1 to one should, technically speaking, the scoreline... Anytime soon. I'm gonna still Alistair tries to take that tension. Once he gets on the sides, that's gonna work brilliantly. And there's the pause being called. His ping is not working so fine. A hundred it is. In the meantime, there's the odds order a bit favorable at the moment, which is understandable. Next up, by the way, map number two, that would be Mirage, which is heavily order favored as well. Though Paradox has picked up victories against Rooster and Atletico. The track record speaks for simply the crew of Imagine. 
that team picking up one win after another. For example, also against Greyhound. And that twice. Unpossed, and we're back into the game as Paradox looks for a path into this. Also, in the meantime, a quick look on the scoreboard tells us that this is some damage. Hats with over 150. Absolutely drastic damage dealt so far. Talking about him, he's falling down. The ZZs are starting a shutdown. But either way, it's getting a little dangerous for Ince. Both Ops nearly falling down. It's only that Noobs are standing back in Ivy. And situation occurred to be dangerous. Again, this is, by the way, about nothing else than a slot for that miner. We're in the beginning stage of this Oceania closed qualifier. If you're just wondering which sort of teams we're seeing here. Of course, Greyhounds up on top together with Order, Paradox, and Rewound. Otherwise, Avant, Genuine, Ground Zero, and PC419 made it through. And the Asia Miner is already stacked with quite decent teams. Energy from South Africa, MBPPK from the East Asian region, FFA Mix from Mina, and Alpha Red. From Southeast Asia. So, most definitely, decent Counter Strike we're about to see. And so, Alistair picks up the first. That's Tensei down. Once more, control belongs to order. And this half is already in their hands. There, There is. First eight rounds, possibly nine, going to order. They definitely feel so comfortable over here. Frack needs to come in. That's Prack down. The off strikes again. And it is not to be stopped. The triple in this round already. And he locks down the sights. Builds up the walls and the gates are closed. Nobody of Paradox is even allowed to come anywhere near. Kingfisher doing himself a favor by saving the AWP for the last 30 seconds. Otherwise, that would be just money wasted. Would be just buying a DVD of Game of Thrones Season 8. So I think overall you really need to be a die-hard fan to buy a DVD of Game of Thrones. Until this day. Is the ending for Kingfisher as bad as the ending of Season 8? Unfortunately it is. Imagine takes him down. And so... Paradox on the right track. Pardon, on the right track. Order on the right track. Alistair, no, oh, what? And this could have never happened. Alistair with a flick by the book. As he probably has to go to the hospital afterwards, as this must have a brutal wrist injury. God damn it. What in God's name was that? Absolutely disgusting. You thought he was out of, he was never to be seen out of the range of the scope. Out of the field of view, and then he does something that looks so Draken esque. Absolutely disgusting. 10 to 1 it is. And Paradox. I mean. 
I honestly don't know if they'll bounce back. I have my doubts. And even though this is a beautiful shot for noobs, they're pretty much lining up for Hats. Another one to come through. The damage tower main has been dealt. And Hats, who's playing out of his mind at the moment. He's having his mind splatter just behind him. Tensei's op is there to now let the team prevail. In the meantime, Alistair's op wants to do the same. And Imagine is there to assist Bomb Broad on the pedestal. Up on a train to now be retrieved by Noobster. His op, the only glimpse of hope you could see as somebody from Paradox. But the light, it doesn't shine too bright. No, not so sure if anyone heard that. No, doesn't seem to be the case. Snoopster on his own. And imagine taking a wide, wide way around. Funny, my, funny, why this man played 12 rounds so far, has an ADR 35, whilst having a KD ratio of six. Absolutely amazing, and this tells you how much ADR and KDR don't really go along. In the meanwhile, Noobster, though, the only man to get the second for his team is going to be the knight. Yes. Unfortunately, that's going to be the case. In order, it's number 11 after they had to sweat a little. I mean, what do you want to do here is paradoxes. This is not even your mapping. You have to play with two stand-ins. And I would not call terrain an easy, puggy, puggy-esque, puggy-ish map. So... It's at least the pistols that could deal a lot of damage. Overrun the opponent, but the economy of order is too strong anyway that this will inflict them. Alistair with a flick by the book. A demonstration of his skills now over here on the A site. As Paradox still tries to preach through every single time, and he tried and tried and tried with Fermite, with TNT, with CZs. Whatever happens, this double op setup, it, it, it glues it all together. It is the glue of this Order CS setup. And that glue holds it together so tightly. Now, oh, this is nasty. There we go. The glue seems to stop becoming a little sticky. Either way, imagine comes close. Flashbang thrown on the site. And poor Fisher. It's gonna die like the rest. Unfortunate situation for him and Paradox. You can just feel for them at that point. I mean, surely we could just say it's not their picks, or therefore we don't really need to worry. On the other side of things, it's it's very sad. And it's just two rounds in this half. Then things are being swapped. Order needs to go on the aggressor side by then. And maybe this is gonna bring them to their knees. Maybe. Gotta put it that way. Seems like they just got their game plan set. No real flaws to be identified. Now it's getting a little hot over on every single entry point. It's Order who can control the heat. So all the engagements fail. Perhaps it is gonna be the 14 to 1. Perhaps Paradox will fall on all fronts over and over and over again. Talking about it, Kingfisher survives. Just breaks his angle. Death is going to take him down. Of course he's going to break his ankle. Either way, 13 to 1. And there's no real pressure in order. This is... It feels like a walk in the park, you know. Grabbing some flowers for your loved ones. 
taking a portrait picture of the beautiful lake. Sitting on a bench, reading a book from Franz Kafka. Something like that, maybe. Sounds sophisticated. And in the meantime, we have realized how sophisticated those ops are. With one after another fall in hats, creates the chaos needed. Paradox cannot prevail at all. And my dear friend Connor said in the beginning, this is going to be a shutdown. And unfortunately, he was right. At least for the moment, it is a 14 to 1. And Order does not struggle a single second. One thing that has to be pointed out is the utility damage. Which seems to be a pivotal and critical aspect of the Order setup. Or more likely, of only their CT setup. It, 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 quite impressive it was. I mean, take a look at it. 511 from Inns, 312 from Hats. This is how you can early deny any further access from your opponent. And this makes it all so great. So order two rounds away from winning this game. Starting off good is Tensei, but the Glocks immediately strike back. And this 9mm force is coming down to the A site. The power of order is not to be stopped. They reign supreme over and over again. Still, the bomb has to hit the site. With Dofrax happening. Immediately. Order established control. The buy is going to be the best... They can get at the moment. AK twice. There we go. Slapping the MP5 in the face. Do it again, Alistair. Come on. We have to wait for that. Either way, Triple Scout setup is something I very enjoy about Paradox at the moment because it can prove, it has proved in the past to be very, very effective. As, you know, two shots combined do the job. Insto is not here for playing and fooling around. And as Sprackham comes through, his head splattered around the wall behind him. Only one more man. And Alistair, run and gun it is. 16-1 for order. And this was brutality striking on the side of 